Foreign language learning is hard work. It requires a lot of time and effort. And to do it right, you really need to immerse yourself in the target language as much as possible. Usually that means trying to push your abilities to a higher level, which sometimes can be uncomfortable. More often though, it requires a lot of routine work and consistency. And that's the reason why everybody who wants to learn a language is looking for a shortcut. Frankly, I think this is why you're seeing more people these days use AI in their language learning process. It's really concerning. Now, AI can help you when you study a language, but you need to know how to use it the right way. And it absolutely is not a replacement for a native speaker. So here, I'll give you an example. A few weeks ago, I made a video on another channel about the NES baseball game Bad News Baseball. This was known in Japanese as Gekito Stadium when it was released in Japan back in December 1989. Now, I happen to have a copy of this old issue of Famitsu magazine, which includes a review of the game. So here's the page with the review. Gekito Stadium is right in the middle, obviously, since it's the only baseball game on this page. And as you can see, the reviewer's scores, which are out of 10, were okay, but not superb. Now, as what's probably a low intermediate student of Japanese, I naturally wanted to read as much of this as I could, but sometimes my self-imposed video deadlines don't give me quite enough time to do things the right way, and so I turned to DeepSeek for help. In particular, I wanted DeepSeek to help me translate the fourth review, this one right here. The reviewer says that the computer's feeling, or shubi, was manuke, and naturally I wanted to know what manuke meant. And so I asked DeepSeek to translate it for me, which you can see here. It was kind enough to provide notes as well, telling me that manuke is a slang term for flawless or overly perfect. And well, I believed it. You know, sometimes when you're tired and you just want to get something done, you aren't going to check up on things. That's a big mistake. Well, my first problem was not actually reading what DeepSeek told me. As you can see here, it gave me the wrong Japanese word. Now, since the word is in katakana, and since my katakana recognition is still pretty bad, it's not much of a surprise that I read it wrong. If I had taken a few more minutes to check things out, I would have realized that the definition is actually easy to find in Wiktionary. Basically, the reviewer was complaining that the computer control defense in this baseball game was slipshod or stupid. And, of course, that's a long way off from saying that it was perfect. Did the AI chatbot lie to me? Well, maybe. My guess, though, is that it simply hallucinated when reading the image. Remember, I gave it an image instead of giving it the actual text. That's probably why it gave me an imaginary word that doesn't mean anything instead of the word that was actually written there. In the end, though, the lesson to learn is that you cannot just trust AI to get things right all the time. But that doesn't mean that it's useless. I've actually found DeepSeek very helpful for translating Taiwanese Hokkien or Minanhua words to English. And it's even better when it comes to Taiwanese Hokkien idiomatic phrases, the sort of thing that you usually can't find an English translation of. Of course, the nice thing about these definitions is that I can always go to my wife, who is a native speaker, for a reality check. And that's the key. You need to know the language well enough to be able to check for hallucinations and other ridiculousness if you really want AI to help you. But once you know the language to that level, AI can actually be really useful. And in fact, you're only going to disadvantage yourself if you decide to completely ignore it. So let me give you another example. Anyway, a few months ago I put AI to the test in this blog post. My goal was to see how AI would do at translating this classic Li Bo poem from the Tang Dynasty. I found two different English translations of the poem. First was this one from 1929, and second came this one from a much more recent publication. Anyway, I posed the pretty innocent question to DeepSeek, and the translation it gave me was actually better than either of the two existing translations. I know what you're thinking, really? Better? Yeah, I'm serious, and it actually gets better than that, but first let's take a close look at the translation. The first incredible thing about DeepSeek's translation is that it rhymes. Now, that second, more modern translation also rhymes, as you can see here. However, the language here is overly simple, and it's not quite as elegant as it could be. I mean, just listen to it. At dusk I leave the hills behind, the moon escorts me all the way. Looking back, I see the path wind across the woods so green and gray. Now, let's compare that to the first four lines of the Deep Seek version. At dusk I left the jade green mountains high, the moon walked with me as I homeward went. Turning, I gazed on the path from the sky, layered in azure, veiled in mist descent. We can also compare that to the old 1929 translation. 
That one goes like this. Down the blue mountain in the evening, moonlight was my homeward escort. Looking back, I saw my path lie in levels of deep shadow. I'll let you come to your own interpretive conclusions here, and you can find a link to this blog post itself in the description. I made this one free for everybody. Anyway, after doing some deep comparing, I discovered, to my joy, that Deep Seek didn't hallucinate, at least not that I could tell this time around. And it really did a good job. Anyway, I decided to push things a little bit further just to see how far AI would take me. I asked DeepSeek why in the world Li Bo would use the phrase Bi Shan, which means the Jade Green Mountain, and what that phrase symbolizes. Now, if you do a Google search for Bi Shan, you'll find a whole bunch of articles about the Bi Shan district of Singapore, which is not what I was looking for. And even if I do a Google search for a simple question like this, why Li Bo uses the word Bi Shan, I come up with pages that mostly just repeat the text of the poem. What I'm trying to figure out here is not just what the poem means, but what makes it a great poem. And as you can see, questions like this really are not easy to answer even if you know the language well. There are some cultural connotations that are really hard to figure out unless you are extremely immersed. DeepSeek, however, gave me an interesting answer. As you can see, there are four different parts to this answer. I've summarized them here. So first, the jade green color, B, represents nobility, immortality, and spiritual purity. Second, the mountain is a spiritual retreat for recluses, and the jade green is kind of like an elixir to immortality for them. Third, the jade mountain contrasts with the mundane world, what Li Bo calls Tian Jia, the farm home, which refers to his friend's home. And of course, Li Bo loved to describe himself as a wanderer between the realm of the immortal and the world. None of that is incorrect as far as I could tell, and it's pretty insightful too. So now we can go a step deeper into the textual analysis. And so my next question to DeepSeek was an attempt to fit that phrase Bi Shan, the Jade Green Mountain, into the rest of the poem. So let's take a look at the AI translation so that this makes sense for those of you who might not speak Chinese. My question was whether there was a symbolic meaning to Li Bo leaving the Jade Green Mountain high to descend this azure layered path that is veiled in the mist. Now the Chinese phrase we're calling the azure layered path veiled in the mist is Cang Cang Heng Cui Wei. Cang, which is repeated twice here, means green, and Cui means green jade or jadeite. In other words, we're not just talking about a somewhat vague azure covered path in the mist. We're actually talking about going through the green into the green. In other words, the question that I was asking DeepSeek was not the sort of question that you could ask it if you can't read any Chinese at all. And that's one of the keys here. The more that you know about the subject you're looking into, the better your chances are of actually getting something useful from AI. Now, the second part of my question to DeepSeek was to compare the Tianjia or the farmhouse to something called Hongchen. Now, Hongchen means the dust of the mortal world. This is a phrase that I've known for a long time, actually. It is well known because of the idiom Kan Po Hongchen, or to see through the vanity of the mortal world and gain enlightenment. It's also a really cool phrase in this context because Hong means red, which means that we're dealing with another color, right? So my question was whether Li Bo leaving the heavenly green mountain to descend to see his friend wasn't like going back to this Hongchen. Anyway, this was DeepSeek's response. DeepSeek explains at first that Li Bo was descending from a stronger, more vibrant green down through lesser green as he descended the mountain. So is that true? Is it false? I'll be honest, I don't really know. I haven't read a lot of Chinese commentary on this poem, and the dictionaries all tell me that those words simply mean green. Perhaps Deep Seek is hallucinating here, but even if it is hallucinating, I think it's a pretty cool interpretation. And Deep Seek then does some of the work for me, comparing the children rushing up to open the thorn door with the solitary grandeur of the mountain. This comes from later on in the poem. Now the other cool part is that the climax of the poem, near the end, suggests that the transcendence of the mountain actually can be found in the mortal world, provided that you've got a good friend and enough wine. And I could have gone on from there if I really wanted to. The point is that you can get a lot out of AI's answers, provided that you're able to spot the hallucinations, of course, and provided that you actually have at least some idea of what you're asking it and what you're talking about. Even still, AI will never be a substitute for good old-fashioned language learning. So don't throw away your textbooks. Don't delete your television shows. And for goodness sake, do not trust the sample sentences that AI generates for you. If you really want to learn a language, you still need to put in the work to learn it. 
But having said that, don't be afraid to use AI, especially when it comes to diving in deep. As long as you are willing to do your homework and double check, you'll find that AI can actually help you out quite a bit. It's kind of like an encyclopedic chatbot, and as long as you make sure to keep it honest and you ask it tough questions and you challenge it when you don't believe it, you'll find that it's actually helpful. Anyway, that's been my personal experience with it.